white. You still ain't getting none of the white. Still ain't getting none of the white. Get some of the white. Let me get some of that white. Hey, if y'all didn't know, at home, it's a damn celebration. Guess where we are? You'll never guess. You'll never guess. Well, maybe you will because you don't hear a cell phone interference. We have returned. And we back. The faculty lounge has returned to Q4 Radio. <laughs> What's up, everybody? We have returned. John Jay over here, back with Anonymous. Uh, Breezy fell down. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Breezy fell down. I don't know where Breezy is. <laughs> Wherever Breezy is, be safe and return my phone call. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, we back in... in it feels damn good. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's a little hot. It's hot as fuck. I guess it's hot everywhere, though. Yeah. I'm back, fatter, hey, louder. We all are. More opinionated than ever. Look, look, I was out with my girl, right? So we was out doing a little shopping. And you know, we butt watchers. <laughs> we look at booty everywhere we go. Hey, man, booties are so, so, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Is this? A lot of different kinds of booties. No two booties are alike. Yeah, uh, no, no. I've seen people with the exact same booty. I've never. You you must have been somewhere out of the country. I've never <laughs> seen two <laughs> booties that looked exactly alike. <laughs> booties are like ears. <laughs> All right. But anyway, we was out <laughs> booty watching, All and right. we noticed everybody gained some weight. Everybody did, yeah. Because the level of thickness was like at a 9.5 outside. <laughs> I mean, just all the asses. Even the little, the 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 traditional Mexican butt was a little bigger than <laughs> it, it was usually is. a little is. juicier. <laughs> if you will. I couldn't think of a word. Per, per where se. Where are my words at, man? I, I don't know where my words are. We got to get we gotta get the in-person chemistry back. Yeah, I got to find my words. Because we've been talking on the damn phone for three months. And you know what, though? I must honestly say, man, I really stopped caring about everything. There's been so much stuff going on that I stopped caring about everything. Like People have been asking me my opinion, mm-hmm. and without this weekly exercise of ours, I haven't had an opinion. Cause you never, cause you don't have to, right? Yeah, you can just go. <laughs> you can go back to hey, whatever. I could just be in the. I go back to being an old man. <laughs> yeah, where's my, my newspaper and my black coffee? Get out of my face. Yeah, uh. yeah. Well, I mean, for me, I've, and I've done that more often lately. I have, I have fallen into the rage pit because I am a new Twitter user. Like I've been had an account, uh-huh. but I never really got into Twitter as a thing, right? <clears throat> so now that I'm on there, bruh, that shit, Twitter is designed to make you mad. No, nah, it depends on who you follow or what you there for. Man, look, it's like everybody, the whole, everybody's got an opinion thing. And to see a mass of idiots all co-signing one idea, it's like it's beautiful because it's America. But yeah. at the same time, it's, it's not a, just America, though. It's everywhere. Well, I mean, I understand hey, Twitter, that. Twitter is worldwide. I understand like, I that. I follow a couple people from England, a couple people from Tokyo. That's what I got to do. I got to I gotta follow some international people, man. Yeah, Twitter is everywhere. I'm going to follow David Beckham. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I Who's mean, I don't, I'm not sure what he would say. No, 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 I'm going to follow Idris Elba. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's who I follow. No, nah, I want to follow somebody that's not in the vein of Americana. Like somebody that's all the way out of the America thing. Akon? We gonna get to Akon. <laughs> nah, but like, uh, who who is somebody that's just not a, a truly non-American? Are you asking me as an American? No, no. I'm saying, let me think. Um, ah, man, see, because everything that we know about together collectively is like Americanized. Even like a burner boy, like yeah. that's why I used to like watching the international news because it'd be like South African right. pop star right, or right, Korean. Right. Uh, all them K-pop groups. Oh, no, no, that's still like American. You know what? I'm gonna follow Sean Paul. There we go. Uh, I mean, he's pretty Americanized. Uh, he's pretty Americanized. Nah, man, that's dance hall. You from Jamaica, man? He got thick accent. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah, Sean Paul. But he's but nah. So you want somebody like, like people a, like Sean? You want somebody like a a Messi, a Lionel Messi? Yeah, like, like, like somebody that. Or, 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 or Shakira. Yeah, because I was you know, watching... Um, somebody I, who's way bigger outside of America than in America. So I gave you my ESPN login. I, um, never, I, don't, I don't know how to use that stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> because it always has, like, who's your provider? 
and like, I don't know. Oh no, that's that's is. for live TV. I was giving you the ESPN Plus login. So oh, you gotta so put must, a, must have downloaded the wrong app. No, nah, you was in there, but you were trying to use ESPN Live TV. When you go to ESPN Plus, you just get all the all the programs. You know, not I've, live. I've never successfully watched the show on Hulu. That's because you're ignorant. I've never successfully <laughs> searched up something I wanted to watch, and it popped up, and I pressed play. It's okay. never happened for me. Well, I was saying um, ESPN because it made me think about. Uh, the last thirty for thirty that came on, um, oh, who is it, Bruce Lee or Mike? No, 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 no. After that, so they after Mike they did Lance Armstrong, then Bruce Lee. Mm. No, 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 yeah, they did Lance Armstrong, then Bruce Lee. But last Sunday they did uh, the home run race. Oh, Mark yeah. McGuire and Sammy Sosa. Yeah, because it seems like Mark McGuire is still in the league, right? Like, ain't he doing something still? Mark McGuire is the hitting coach for uh, the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know Sammy Sosa, he was on some bullshit, so the Cubs don't want nothing to do with him. I don't understand that, man. And, and, you know he got caught hitting with a cork bat. Yeah. This was after the steroid shit. But it wasn't um... – oh, yeah. Yeah, it was. But that wasn't the 66 year, right? No, 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 no. That, that was, was, was 2000 – Something. Yeah. The 66 year was 98. That was, no, it wasn't. Yeah. It was? Yeah, it was 98. Yeah. Ain't that some shit? Because yeah. I'm watching it in my mind. I'm like, that was like 2001, 2002, yeah. right? 90 Damn. fucking eight. Yeah. Wow. I remember that like yesterday. Uh-huh. Like. And that's the thing. When you see the dot, it's going to bring back all of them old memories of seeing Home runs on the news every night. Yeah. And Subway giving away sandwiches if Sammy Sosa hit a home run or something. Yeah. Like, I remember all of that. But I was thinking about Sammy Sosa, and this dude is like a charismatic Dominican guy, which mm-hmm. Dominican guys usually are, except for you for some reason. But I, um, I don't I, – you know what I think it is, man? Mm-hmm. I self-diagnosed myself the other day, man. Okay. I think it's because I started smoking reefer before I started having sex. I think most people start smoking reefer before they start having sex. Huh. Well, I, uh, uh, or they started around the same time. Yeah, see, but like I was smoking reefer for like uh, almost two years before I started having sex. Me too. Like, but like a lot. Of, I guess yeah, we was, we was together, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> I just always, I've always been stoned. Yeah, but Sammy, yeah, I, no, Sammy no. Sosa. Was the charismatic Dominican, and I'm like, okay, he plays American baseball, but he's so far from being an American. Like every time they did interviews, he was like, man, uh, Mark McGuire, he the man in America. I'm the man in uh, in, in in Dominican Republic. Yeah. Like he let it be known every time, like nigga, I'm not from here. Yeah, I'm not like y'all, and I'm dominating <laughs> this game. Yeah, this game is not yours. I mean, but what else? Who's better than America though? What Korea? At baseball? Yeah. Cuba. No, I mean like the the, the big leagues. Oh, uh I it's, guess it's J- only Japan. South Korea. Japan. South Korea. Ain't, ain't Japan a big baseball town? No, Japan is wrestling, pro wrestling, right? I don't know. Yeah, Japan know got a big pro wrestling thing. I know that South Korea, they opened up the league again. Mm. And they um man. Welcome back to the Faculty Lounge podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like we haven't said that. This that is we, episode 92. Yeah. 92. <laughs> uh, we, we, we said our names, but we didn't say yeah. welcome back to the Faculty Lounge podcast. Welcome back. Thank you to everybody, <laughs> everybody, all six of y'all that was watching our crappy phone episodes. Yeah, man. Jesus, man. Yeah, thank that, you for not even too many comments. Yeah. But we got some, we got some real. Did you see the, the one racist dude? No. Yeah, he say uh his comment was that's why I don't give a shit about dead n words. That's that's the uh, uh Ahmad Arbery um the uh, the Ahmad Arbery video. What? <clears throat> and I went to his channel. Dude is like a real live white supremacist, man. Oh word. Yeah. So we catching people's eyes, huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, when they leave dislikes, they care. <laughs> wow. For real. But I've been seeing comments on our old videos, which confirms that these new episodes have been. Boo boo. Oh yeah. Well, I guess people like, no, they wouldn't have done this ninety times if they all sounded like this. Right, <laughs> right. Like, man, don't let the sound fool you. We're good at this. But shit, <laughs> since we're talking about games and sports and leagues, 
what you think about the uh the current controversy between the infighting with the NBA superstars as far as the, the league opening back up? Uh, I, I feel like it's um somebody was able to handle their money better. <laughs> 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 Niggas will play on crates if they could. <laughs> like, man, I feel like it's a, it's a. On the one half, it's like, all right, I want to play the game while I'm still young. Yeah, I feel LeBron because he been through. He been through it. He, like, this was his year. He like 17 years into the game. This was his you year to, to get that last chip. Or yeah, two. yeah, you know, and like you got somebody like Kyrie who's like, <laughs> bro, we can wait. <laughs> hey, I'm good, man. You know? I don't need I don't he, need the money right now. Like we can we can chill. They saying uh You shouldn't have bought that third mountain, LeBron. <laughs> he, he, Kyrie trying to wait out till K D come back. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but they talking about uh holding off to focus on what's going on in the world right now. I don't necessarily think that that's such a great idea because you think about what happened when the Clippers got rid of Donald Sterling. Um, you know, you had Melo, Chris Paul, D Wade, LeBron, and who was somebody else. You know, they came and gave the speech at the game, you know, with people watching, with fans watching. They went out holding hands with the shirts on, LeBron with the I Can't Breathe shirts. Like the NBA is a platform and in in Commissioner uh Silver mm-hmm. let the players <laughs> take a stand for whatever they want. The NBA from Sterling. From to Sterling silver. to Silver. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom well, line is. So how come the NBA could be a platform but not the NFL? Because the NFL sucks big fat donkey the, dick. See, I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it. The NFL is uh it's a it's a um it's a slave based organization in slave my opinion. Slave based organization. Yeah. Damn. It's a slave wow. based organization. Well, I mean they they so what makes it different from the NBA as far as the slaves? Well, I think that in the NBA, you can see their faces, and that makes a huge difference. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't know what the fuck Robbie Gold looked like. <laughs> I still don't. <laughs> like nigga, how is the only football players I know are quarterbacks and Brian Erlacher? Because <laughs> <laughs> Brian Erlacher all over the city yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think that plays a big part. You can see the NBA players' faces. And then – um, I never thought about that, man. The NFL is a more brutal sport. It's like Mandingo uh, fighting. <laughs> Mandingo warriors. Not to not to discount – The Mandingo gladiators. Because if you know what Mandingo fighting is, if you know what Mandingo fighting is, <laughs> you know that shit was – I don't know what Mandingo fighting is. Okay. It sounds <laughs> like a sausage fest. All right. <laughs> If you if you knew what Mandingo fighting is, I, I doubt would, you'd be laughing. I would have yeah. more respect. Yeah. I'll put some respect on the yeah. name. Yeah, you might want to. <laughs> Mandingo fighting <laughs> is where they took they. I think you just laugh at the word Mandingo. <laughs> yeah. Stop laughing, please, please. Somebody is gonna see this and and check your uh, privilege. Hey, but shouts out to Mandingo though. <laughs> I know a guy named Mandingo, and my what's him called? My aunt, um, my uncle actually played at his wedding. And oh, a, I know Mandingo too. <laughs> yeah, I know that dude. He's, he's a, a little uh, ugh. nah, like ain't he animated type guy? No, nah, not at all. It was some other dude that was animated. I thought he was Mandingo. No, nah, he's a dark, dark Puerto Rican dude. Right, I know really who he is. Locks. I know who he is, but it was another dude that was there that I thought was Mandingo because uh, nah. the name seemed like it matched the character. Uh, no. Nah. But no, nah, Mandingo fighting is where they would take uh, two plantation owners would take their biggest and strongest slaves, and they would fight to the death, bare mm-hmm. hands. Damn. Yeah, bare hands, fight to the death. Like you seen Django? Uh huh. You. It was a Mandingo fighting scene in Django. Oh man. Where he had to break dude arms and gouge his eyes out and bust his head with the hammer and kill him. Yeah. So when I reference Mandingo fighting with the NFL. I don't mean to take away from the brutality that yeah, was going I, on at that point. But, I just learned something. Wow. But, That's, you know, it, with football, you got grown the strongest, most finely tuned athletic men in the world running at each other at high speeds over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over for a whole football game. Yeah, an hour. Yeah, and I think all of that stuff plays into what makes the NBA a better organization. And then look at the commissioner. 
You know, yeah. look at look at the president, like Roger Goodell versus uh, Donald. I mean, David Silver. I think it's David Silver. I, I don't know. Commissioner Silver. 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 <laughs> look yeah. at look at the two personalities. Like, man, dude is all for. You no, know, you're a Jewish guy. Yeah. You know, so as far as the Jewish people that I've dealt with and seen in the public light, as far as oppression goes, they don't fuck with it. They're not gonna say, "Hey, man, you can't speak out about oppression against your people." It's Jewish people out here just with like, numbers tattooed on their arms. Just like um, I never forget this, man. I will never forget this. Louis C.K. and the other dry English dude. Oh, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, nigga, 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 all in front. Oh of Chris yeah, Rock. Chris Rock just laughing and he hawing with him. And then um, Jerry Seinfeld like, bro, what the what the fuck is y'all doing? Yeah, he said, man, I <laughs> never seen the humor in it, and I'm not gonna try to find it. Yeah, yeah, that's why yeah. I, I like he Jerry. Said, I'm not gonna try to find yeah. it. But I think that um, the NFL would, can never be that way because they're not gonna let Jewish people infiltrate that structure and system. Yeah, man. Like the NFL is a good old boys type of place. Yeah, and the NFL's super old too. Mm-hmm. The NFL mm-hmm. started like 1899. Right when they had the leather helmets. Yeah. Them niggas was giving each other brain damage. Yeah, that was like some real Vikings. Nah, but they said it was all white too, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know if it was, I assume it was all white. If it was in the 1800s, probably. Yeah, 1899, 1901, somewhere around there. Yeah, you yeah. Know? It's just big burly yeah. Vikings. Ugh. Yeah, but I think they should cancel the NFL till further notice <laughs> and start the NBA up immediately. Well, what they say, the NFL miss, is going to be missing out. Or the, who, somebody's going to be missing out on, like, basically $5 billion in revenue over the, this year if they don't come back? Probably the NBA because you know they got the um, the NBA collective bargaining agreement is crazy. Like you see how players are getting these crazy, crazy supermax deals. Yeah, that's because of the TV deal. Mm. So if they not broadcasting games on TV, your team ain't no, ain't nobody on your team getting that money. Right, and then you are gonna yeah. see a lockout. I remember I seen the game the, uh, one day. I'm like I'm watching Channel Seven. There was no Bulls games on. It wasn't the playoffs, and I'm sitting there watching like. The Rockets versus the Kings or something. Yeah, that's what they've been doing. And I'm like, how is it, how is it that there's no Chicago team playing right now in Chicago, but I'm watching these two West Coast teams play. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I've been watching. Uh, you know, I. Well, we'll we'll get to that. What we've been doing in the meantime, like uh, it's been a while since we talked about what we've been doing. Man, we've been doing so much stuff. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I think they should start the NBA back. I would love to see what they do with the platform because it's so much room for speaking your mind and speaking out with the NBA. I would just love to see their take on what they're going to say about the events going on now. Like the NFL, you already know. Oh, we signed Kaepernick. It's back to business as usual. You think that's what it's going to be? Yeah, they're not going to – look, they're going to avoid – talk. Cap going to take it, though? Because I feel like Cap been playing with them just as much as he they've been playing with him. That's the $6 million question, my dude. I don't know if Cap's going to take it. You're wiener, Cap. I can't <laughs> – not on camera. <laughs> All right, so I got to put – I got to put a uh, – Shouts out to sanitization. I got to put a shield on my soldier. Sanit- sanitation. <laughs> Nice and snug. <laughs> Got to pinch the tip. <laughs> the sanitation glove <laughs> for the mic. For the mic, mic. But yeah, I, I, I think that's the six million dollar question. Does Kaepernick take the job? Mm. Should he? I, I, don't, I, I would say. I uh, tell him to follow his heart. If he want to play, yeah, go on and play. Yeah, like if he wants to play, then yeah. But if it's just gonna be like a, a won, but then you get out there, you garbage. Like, what if he actually is garbage compared to other quarterbacks now? Or what if receivers just don't want to catch his balls? <laughs> I, I doubt there are any receivers that want to catch his balls. <laughs> but they would probably want to receive a pass from him. <laughs> you know, but I mean, like, what if, what if like, the other players make don't wanna, him look bad. They don't want to work with him. Yeah, just to get him off the field again. Well, I imagine that for the other reason, like because he wasn't bad when they when they kicked him out the league. But that was a long time ago. Exactly. Like, I, what if he? What if they? What if he's not that bad? But they make him look that bad. He'll be. And he'll they still get him out of there. He'll be like that. I know you've seen the uh, the the. I, I guess it's a grammar school or high school basketball team. 
and they had the one disabled player, and they uh, pass him the ball, and everybody clear out and let him shoot. Yeah, that's gonna be capping it. He's uh, token. If he take that job, he's definitely gonna he's be token. Token. Anytime somebody question the NFL, life. look, we re-signed Colin Kaepernick, famous civil rights activist. Famous civil rights activist. Yeah, that's who he is now. He's no mm. longer a quarterback. He's a civil rights activist. He's a civil rights quarterback. <laughs> he single handedly quarterbacked this movement. He's throwing passes for equality. <laughs> no, nah, but I don't know, man. I, either way, I still ain't messing with the NFL. I probably never get back into football again. Yeah, man. I, I, I you know, I, I don't know. I, I've been watching games. I. I can't even say been watching. I games. don't ever want to say never. You know, like I maybe I've watched a couple plays mm-hmm. in the last couple of seasons. Well, we'll see. But I do have a five year old son, and you know, if he wants to play football, I ain't gonna stop him. Oh man, you seen the Aaron Hernandez doc, right? Motherfuckers out here catching CTE, bro. You want your son with CTE, bro? I mean, I. He's not the kind of guy that's going to go out there and choke you out in your sleep, son. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the problems? He's going to be 17. <laughs> I also don't think he's going to be the guy to go out there and play football. He's going to be Robbie Gold, though, man. He could. Yeah, he be kick Robbie Gold. <laughs> kick the shit out some shit. <laughs> He nah. kicked me the other yesterday. We was sitting there playing. He was boxing and shit. He take two steps back and kick me in my chest. Hey. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you little motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, but whatever happens, man, I hope sports get started soon because it's hard. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's hard, hard without sports. I was watching old MMA fights I seen already. <laughs> well, I mean, MMA is already going. Like, the UFC has been back. Yeah, ain't they trying to – he do really trying to start that island. Oh, he got it. The he island is real. The it, island is real. Yeah. Yeah, they've been they've been uh, shooting in Las Vegas, but the island is definitely real. Fight yeah. island? Yeah. Yeah. But I've been watching um, the UFC – it's empty. It's just the fighters, the trainers, the refs, and the commentators, and the cameramen. Yeah. And Dana White. Yeah, that's what I was saying when we we reintroduced the show. In South Korea, they're playing baseball games in front of stuffed animals. <laughs> like, they got the whole stands just full of stuffed animals. See, that's what I'm saying, man. You got to love Eastern culture to a degree, <laughs> man, because it's just... Stuff that you would never see in the West. <laughs> yeah. Like, I could never the see. Cubs playing the Sox. Yeah, the Texas a... <laughs> Rangers with a bunch of stuffed animals in the in the, in the the stands. Like, I, I just can't see it. <laughs> no. Nah. But, yeah, I, I I don't know. I think Kyrie, I understand Kyrie's point when he say, man, we need to focus on what's going on now. But. I mean, you taking away the opportunity from athletes that don't have as big as a platform as you do or yeah. LeBron does. Yeah. You know? Shouts out to LeBron, too, yeah. for um, creating that, um, what is the voter registration thing that he's doing? I don't know about his creations. Is it, a, is it an app or is it a... Shouts out to LeBron for being a phenomenal human. Yeah, man. Like, somebody put it into perspective. I can't remember who it was. It was like LeBron came into the NBA... When he was 17. Yeah. Like, man, and and never had a fuck up, never broke bad, never disappointed the league or his fans. Like, man, LeBron is, like, exemplary as far as rich niggas go. It's a, a voting rights group. Yeah. What they do. What they do. So they're, they're – um, it's different than other voting rights groups. Like, they're actually on the ground level – um. In different cities, getting people to vote, getting black people to vote, and helping people who might need to just, you know, do this or do that to be eligible to vote. Helping people register and and, and get clear to vote. I don't, you know what I was thinking about? Are we, are we done with the NBA? I mean, we are talking about LeBron James. Well, okay, because I, I, I had a thought about voting. Uh Uh-huh. Why can't felons vote? Because... If you can vote, then you have a voice. No, I, I know that, but I'm saying, what is the 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 um? Oh, because that I mean that's part the of legal the, reasons why. Ain't that all in there with like the Thirteenth Amendment, Thirteenth, Fourteenth, Fifteenth Amendment? It's like that's what I was thinking. It's like you're still a slave. Like slaves can't vote, and yeah. once you're a felon, you you're a slave. But that's not right, though. Like I guess once you're if when you're in prison, you're a slave. 
But so are felons like living slaves? <clears throat> I don't know because you, you can go to jail for it's hard to get a job once you're a felon. It's hard to make money for your work once you're a felon. But you can go to prison for a misdemeanor though. And then I mean once you spend a night in jail, three nights in jail, you're a felon, right? No. You gotta be convicted of a felony? Yeah. So yeah, so I mean yeah, so a felon. You can be a misdemeanor. You can be a misdemeanor offender. Go to to prison. Yeah, and come out and have all the rights you had when you went in. But because you feel it, been a, you're a felon, like they take away two of your fundamental rights. <laughs> yeah, like well, they take the away one? they take away your right to bear arms. Yeah, you can never hold a gun again, right? Right, like you got to go through a whole bunch of stuff to get it back. And I've seen it done, but mm. essentially, you cannot own a firearm if you're a felon. You can't and I own don't a firearm or vote. Yeah, and I don't understand that because if you're not a violent criminal, then yeah, what do me having a gun got to do with but anything? Then now, there's some certain states that got, and that's the thing about the union, is that it's a union of 50 different states. It needs to be more perfect. See or not? See, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like it's 50 more out of 50 people. What's the stats? Like out of 50 people, how many of those are going to be twins? Like, what two states are going to have the same exact laws? Texas and Utah. For real, I don't think so. No, nah, because there ain't no polygamy. Nah, in Texas. Right, I was just about to say they just yeah. legalized polygamy. Polygamy in Utah. Mm. Yep, they just legalized it. It's all ball, baby. So it wasn't, but it wasn't illegal before. It was statutory. All right. It was statutory uh, illegal. So, so it, it it was uh it was it wasn't illegal, but it was uh decriminalized. Uh, shouts out to D Ray. <laughs> yes, D Ray. <laughs> Invite me to your ranch in Salt Lake, <laughs> Mr. Davis. Oh, no, I just know he got like, what, two? I think he got two girlfriends. Yes, now he can have two wives in yeah. Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. With Carl Malone. Carl Malone. <laughs> now, Carl Malone is so country, man. When I be seeing these documentaries, man, like, that's, man, I was watching, um, I watched Nate Robinson go to Mike Bibby's house. Oh yeah, I, I like I like Nate Robinson series. Yeah, he just be sliding through. the the pull up or what's it? No, it ain't the <clears> pull that's up. Joe Budden with the pull up. Yeah, but Nate Robinson with the I'm gonna come to your house thing, and he um <laughs> I'm gonna come to your house thing. I'm gonna come over there. I'm gonna come over there and do this thing. <laughs> Mo White, <laughs> Mo White, Mo White. Oh, it's a celebration, y'all. We we back for the first time ever. Uh, uh, and it's Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Oh yeah, we the, are remiss if there's six of us. Watching this, well, happy Father's Day to the two fathers. So I saw a post. <laughs> D.L. Hughley posted. Hughley. Oh, oh, uh, uh, blessings and thanks that D.L. Hughley is okay. He had passed out during a, um, a stand-up show, uh-huh. and uh, he went on and, and said he'd been diagnosed with COVID-19. But oh, he, yeah. Yeah, but he's doing okay. So yeah. blessings for that. But he had he posted, he was, you remember I told you he said, uh, Fathers, y'all better not touch the grill today. Yeah. So he ran no, off a whole just, just list of- to eat that burnt ass food. <laughs> <laughs> he sent the whole list of, of designations of relations that uh he was saying happy Father's Day to. Mm. So he was saying like fathers, stepfathers, big brothers, uncles, you know, and stuff like that. Little sisters. Do they get in the club? Uh-huh. Do uncles get in the big brother? I mean, the, the father club? I mean, you know, my uncle is there. More than my father was. Yeah, I think that's 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 the funny thing. Cause you think about Mother's Day, right? It's only one way to get in the mother's club. I if mean, you're not a mother, you're not getting a happy mother's day. Yeah. You know a mother that ain't a mother that's getting a happy I mean, you know a woman that ain't a mother that's getting a happy mother's day? See, that's the thing, cause cause women they they ain't finna just let you come in and do it. No way. You know, like there's 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 a certain level of pride mm-hmm. in women. Like there is no, I mean there's there's horrible mothers out there. There's moms Terrible. that just drop Terrible. their kids off and go into other states for months. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I mean, I've I've heard of women who who give their daughters to their boyfriends I've to s- keep them. I've I've seen situations like that too. You they know? try to keep it on the low, but I know what's going on. You know, and it's like there's a horrible women out there, but. For the most part, women are not gonna let another woman take what's theirs. Look, I'll put it to you, you in know? the words of one of our greatest. And even as a 
crack fiend mama. You always was a black queen mama. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about this, right? Like the mother can be strung out, beat her kids, put her daughter out to her boyfriend or whatever the case, right? Mm -hmm. But when Mother's Day come around, she is entitled to that yeah. commendation, right? Yeah, and all year long, daddy got to earn it. You, if you, ooh, you put it into the exact words. <laughs> like, the daddy got to earn that shit. All year. Yes, if all you year long. You decide three months this year that you're not going to be a daddy. But, but that's the thing, though. You can decide three months this year that you're not going to be a daddy. Right, right. Mama got to come home. Mm-hmm. Whether it's 36 hours, 48 hours, mama got to come At home. At some point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Papa yeah. could be a Rolling Stone. Yeah. Hmm. You know, Papa could send some money home. Right. But mama got to be there. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I was just thinking about my mother and my father, and it's like, you know, in the early years, <clears throat> me and my father didn't have a great relationship. Like, I always knew who he, who he was, always knew where he was at. He'll come get me from time to time. And, so you knew you know, where he was at? Yeah. I didn't know where my daddy was. Like, I, I I knew where he was at because I was, you know, it was never a time where, well, for small stretches where it wasn't no communication. But mm -hmm. he'll still, you know what I'm saying, come through and fuck with me a little bit. But it was more times where he said he was coming and didn't than when he said he was coming and did. Mm. Right? And that's what created the rage as a youth. Yeah. You know, but as a grown man... It's like, I always say, like, man, it's when you realize the superhero is just a dude, like, you're just a dude. Yeah. Like, when you get grown, you look at your father as a superhero, as a boy. When you get older, you realize he's, he's just a man. He's yeah. just a man. Mm -hmm. And my mother, my oh. mother's a woman. <laughs> like, hey, what were you going to say? It didn't sound like you were going to say it. It sounded like you were going to put your mother on a way higher pedestal I was. than just a man. I, I was, and I think that's a part of the whole thing. Like, man, it's just mothers. It's different. They're there. Like, yeah. Because when you're hungry, you're going to go to your mama. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you want to play, you're going to go to your daddy. Yeah. When you're hungry, yeah. you're going to go to your mama. Yeah. Because mama going to be there to 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 feed you, know. you and wipe your butt. Mm hmm Daddy gonna tell, tell you, you beautiful you are. Daddy gonna tell you two plus two is four every time. Mm -hmm. But mama's gonna be that two plus two. Yeah. To be that four. Well said. Well mm -hmm. said. Be that for you. But you know, be yeah, I, I was for you. I was just going over it in my mind and and thinking about my old man and how now our relationship is uh is solid because I'm grown now and I do the same shit he do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because when I was a little boy, I'm my mama. Like, man, when I'm a child, I'm my mother's child, right? So I'm mm -hmm. acting like my mama. Yeah. But when I get grown and start getting with women and having my life experience and being in the workplace and all of that, that's oh, him. You're, you're a daddy's son. Yeah, because when I get with him and talk about it, he's saying the same shit I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I posted the picture on Instagram today. I'm like, man, this is where I get all my shit from. Because uh -huh. when I talk to him today, it's like everything that I'm doing now is stuff that he into or was into or was trying to master at my age. All right. You know what I'm saying? So I have no idea what my father was doing when he was my age. Yeah, call him, man. He was he was doing blows. You got to force that shit. You got to force it and and make him have a relationship with you. You got to make see, him, and, you gotta and make him cry. Thing. That's the thing. Like, I don't care about anything that much. Mm -hmm. Like, a father's love, <laughs> like that. That don't. I, it doesn't resonate, you know. Yeah. Like. Yeah. But shit that doesn't matter matters to me, you know. Like shit that I just don't care about. That that nobody else cares about is the stuff I care about. But then like all this real stuff. Like I just want to say shouts out to all the protesters, all the people out here with the different movements who are actually like. The people who went out and cleaned up after the riots and the looting, the people that were out there with the garbage bags and the brooms sweeping up the streets, getting the community back to where it's going. You know, mm -hmm. shout out to the people who, who who care and who are really out there and really doing it. Yeah. You know, like, because cause there's a lot of Americans. Champagne, the white and the pink got us burping, man. You know what I'm saying? But, like, there's a lot of people out there like me who who 
I said this the other day. Who who rather read the book than be a character in the book? You know? Yeah. And then there's people out there who are way worse than me who are actually the villains in the book. You know? Mm-hmm. The white the, the, the car full of white people pulling up and just handing bricks to young black men and pulling off. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like all this all this horrible shit that you've seen on the TV. You know, and uh, not even on the TV because you don't see it on TV. You see it on Twitter. You see it on Facebook. You see it on Instagram. You see these videos, you know, yeah. of just this crazy stuff that's going on, and then you're seeing it from different angles and different <clears throat> people are posting it. And but, but shouts out to the people who are actually protesting the way that you're supposed to protest, and to the people who are out here helping the or- helping the community get back on its feet. You know, shouts out to all of them because. Mm-hmm. Like like I, like we said, we we ain't been doing nothing, you mm-hmm. know. Like it's well, you know, like, for me, I've been trying to figure out how I feel, you know. Yeah, you see, and this this is not the time to figure out how you feel, you know. Nah, nah, nah. I can't co-sign that for the simple fact be, of I've spent many years of my life not figuring out how I feel and just doing shit. And regretting what I did because that's not how I felt. But I didn't take time to understand how I felt. And at the end of the day, the thing mm-hmm. that matters more than anything is that how, how you, you feel it? about yourself when you look in that mirror. Mm. I cannot, I cannot make I, a decision that's going to affect the rest of my life yeah. if I haven't thought it through and decided how I feel about that decision before I made it. Now, now, I guess what aspect? of of the situation are you talking about like as far as like protesting or looting and rioting or helping with the cleanup or you know posting that post on all of all of those things you know because it's like okay all of those things i find myself at a crossroads with because it's one thing to um I understand, you know, self-esteem is like the most important thing. Like it's esteem if, of your motherfucking self. Yeah, if you don't if you don't love yourself, you can't love. You can't give love that you don't have. Exactly. Yeah, I understand. So I understand what you're saying by looking at the man in the mirror is the most important thing. Like can I look myself in the mirror when I when I just go out there and move without thinking about what I'm gonna do. Yeah. But I um at the same time, you know, how long is long enough? Like when your grandma sends you a birthday card, how long is long enough before you throw that motherfucker out? Mm. Do you take the money out, read it and throw it out? Do I you don't. not read it or do you just save it? I have them all. So you have thirty five of your grandmother's <laughs> birthday cards. My mu- my grandmother didn't send me thirty five cards. <laughs> all the cards that she sent me, I got them. Every single last one. All of them. You've never let anyone. I cannot them throw something away with my grandma's handwriting on it. I just can't do it. You keep one thing. You got it safe, right? Huh? Yeah. You got it. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying you keep one thing with your nah. grandma. You know what I'm saying you nah. keep a. I got all the cards from my mama and all the cards from my grandma. You keep a cassette tape with your mama voice on it. Mm-mm. You know, and you put that in there. Just can't do it, man. Uh, I mean, so I, so let me let me explain to you my conflicting feelings. So. First of all, I want to shout out to all the people out there that have made up their mind that what they're doing is making a difference for the greater good of mankind. Mm-hmm. I don't have to agree with that. As long as you have made up your mind right. that what you're doing is for the greater good. Because yeah. because at the end of the day, and what I haven't li- lost sight of, is this is America. Mm-hmm. Land of the free. Home of the brave. You can believe in whatever the fuck you want to believe in. And you have the right to stand in the street and scream it to the top of your lungs. Yeah. And I will fully support that, whether I agree with it or not, until the day I die. And, and whether I agree with what you're saying or not. Yeah. Exactly. Because that is why we're here. And that is why we love where we're living at. Or that's why you should. Yeah. Because uh, I was talking to a few people and they was talking about, man, I'm, I'm going to go to Canada. Like, man, you know there is no free speech in Canada. You say that a lot. Cause you can go to jail for a speech violation for violation and, and of speech see, law, and that's what I mean. Like, if you can go to jail for being like, man, fuck that, I don't care, then I'll probably be in jail a lot. But as far as like, 
Like, bro, it was a stand up comedian. Yeah. Doing a stand up routine and got locked up. Like Lenny Bruce. I don't know who Lenny Bruce is. All right, Lenny, I've never heard that name before. Lenny Bruce is the 1.0 okay. of Richard Pryor. Bruce Bruce's son? No. no. Stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny, Lenny Bruce. You're, you're actually teaching me some shit today. Yeah. Like, it's like the second thing I don't know about. Lenny Bruce was a pioneer comedian, and he was one of the first dirty black comedians. Dirty black So, comedians. So Lenny Bruce was getting locked up off stage for cussing. Ah. Uh. Know what I'm saying? So it's like they have hates, they have speech law. Like sweat from my balls. Yes. Mm. Like, man, there is no true freedom of speech. You cannot go and say fuck Donald Trump, his yellow haired ass, or whatever. You cannot say that. You could probably say that in Canada, right? I mean, you could probably say that, but depending on what you say and who you say it in front of, if it's So can you go to jail for saying all lives matter? I'm not sure. You have to check Canada law. But what I do know is there is no freedom of speech in Canada. There is no there is not freedom of speech like there is in America in Canada. Yeah, see, and I feel like the freedom of speech thing is like what America is built on, right? Absolutely. But I feel like countries where people don't have that freedom of speech, they can't just go around saying fuck you is where people are more prone to listen to you. Like when you can't just say whatever the fuck you want to say, everything you say has to be meaningful. But well, not everything you say has to be meaningful, but you know, and that's surprising coming from you because you one of the people that I know that anytime you feel like it, you're going to say whatever the f- whatever you want to say. But I'm not going to be crazy with it. I'm not going to be like, but hey, if we you, need to But if you wanted to, you would like to be afforded the right to do so. I mean, I would, I wouldn't even fight it. Like, I would, I would say whatever the fuck I wanted to say. That's all I'm saying. But I know that what I want to say isn't as crazy as what some Americans are out here saying freely. I mean, but uh, and and you know, I can agree with that. But because you know, I'm not, I I I don't care to the point that I'm gonna like fight you. Yeah. For my right yeah. to. I think I should be able to piss on every oak tree in America. Like, what the? I don't. I don't care. Go piss on every oak tree. Exactly. You know? And and that's how I feel. And the conflict for me comes in where you see, uh, 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 Karen get fired from her job at Dairy Queen yeah. because of a tweet that she sent out with the word "nigga" in it. Yeah. Like, come on, man. No, right. don't fire her for that. Yeah, yeah. I feel. I feel that. I feel yeah. That. Like. But I mean, yeah, cause yeah, the law office, the Dunkin' Donuts, the the daycare center, these places aren't like. I feel like not it's not in there with the system systemic racism, you know. Yeah. Oh wow. Like how is how is my waffle cone not uh, how is my waffle cone not, you know, offend? How is my waffle cone offending you, you know? Girl. How 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 would how is Karen systemically oppressing me because she don't want to put sprinkles in my in my Oreo Blizzard? Like, come on, man. And when you fire her, does she become less racist? I don't think she does. I think that creates a whole different kind of fire that goes on generationally. Yeah, man, that's what I was saying. Like, and when it comes to protests and such, you know. All of this, all of, everything that I'm seeing now, for the most part, is lip service. Like the Angel Mama thing, like, all right, racism is over. They took Angel Mama off the box. Don't yeah. get me wrong, a little bit is better than nothing. But at the same hey, time. Hey, my bank closed early on Saturday, <laughs> on Friday. My okay. bank closed at 2 on Friday, 2020. Uh huh. 2020. Can yeah. this year get any weirder? I think it can. 2020 is I the year that can. we decide to start celebrating Juneteenth. 2020. <laughs> and 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 it all it's all very weird to me because it all like, seems like it's by design. Like we all can year, agree. I don't think this year can get any weirder. I do. Unless I shake an alien's hand. I do. 
I there's nothing else that can possibly happen that's going to make me piss myself. So, folks, uh, it would seem that we had some technical difficulties with our recording apparatus, but I'd just like to assure you guys that our task M has continued recording, mm-hmm. and we have crispy, perfectly smooth audio with no interruptions. Yeah, so if you're listening on SoundCloud, it might be a little weird. He just like went away and came back in the middle of. Oh totally no! Even if you're watching on SoundCloud, we have perfect audio and perfect video. Ah, yes. Well, there you go. That's why we spend uh, their monies. Yes, their monies <laughs> will not be defeated. <laughs> no, nah, but I, I don't know, cause it's it's like when you get involved with the herd, you. He, you you give yourself over to the herd mentality, and that's exact. So that's my thing. That's my thing right there about the freedom of speech. You know, is that herd speech? Yeah. You know, I because like in the middle of I've never it makes me been think a, about Greta. I've never been a herd speaker. Like I've never been the type to be like, oh well, I heard somebody else say that and I felt that. You know, like, no, if I say something out of my mouth, it's because I've come to my own conclusion about this thought. Like, I've always been a deep thinker, you know. I just sit there to myself and think and think things out all the way through from different angles. Oh, well, this this angle in this situation might be different. This person might not feel like this, you know. But, like, I've always thought things out a lot. So if I get an idea from you, I take it home and I marinate it, and Mm -hmm. then I bring it. So wherever else I go with yeah, it. Yeah, you you, you, know? you let it spend too much time in the oven because when you take it out, it's a totally different dish than what it was going in. And you know how you was talking about how people confuse the way you speak for not knowing what you're talking about, like you're talking riddles. Yeah. It's because you've, you've created a whole language for the way you understand things. And when you mm-hmm. take it in and give it back, you give it back in that language you created. People so don't understand most people that. not gonna understand that language. Yeah, but, but um, I was thinking about uh, the whole the whole reason why the protest started. Right, I'm under strict belief that everything on the news that you see is a fucking lie, and if it's not a lie, they're showing it to you for a reason. Right, so yeah. through this whole time, everything we've seen on the news has been some bullshit. Everything, right, in one way or another, from coronavirus to killer bees to murder hornets to Y2K. All of it's been some bullshit to scare mm. you, right? Mm. Now, you mean to tell me that right now the news decided to be altruistic mm. and side with the plight of the black man for the betterment of the country? No, no, it's definitely monetary. Like, man, this is a ghost move like I've never seen before. And it's like people are just I got man. falling into being pacified with the mouth with the lip service. I got something to talk about. All right, so I got something crazy to talk like, about. Like, bro, I don't want to see One Nancy sweet, Pelosi. I don't want to see Nancy Pelosi shining my shoes with Kente cloth on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That does nothing for me. It doesn't. <laughs> Uh, but I got something to say crazy after the after we stop right. recording. So let me let me finish my First Amendment American right shit. Absolutely, you know. So let me finish uh, what I'm saying. So it's people protesting because of what they seen on the news. Mm-hmm. It's people protesting because of the impression that they have of Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. It's people protesting for uh, you know. What else? What else? People protesting for uh, face mask and the, face mask is Antifa is LGBTQ. Yeah. All of these people are blended in together, and I keep saying it like, man, I was talking to my um my nation of Islam brother, and I was like, man, the difference between the nation, the only people that have this in common is the nation and the police. You could be a, it could be a sea of people. You can point out who's in the nation, and who's in the police. Uh, force yeah and that uniform is not just clothes it's a whole mentality and lifestyle yeah so when i see people all blending in together doing the same thing for different reasons i don't want to be a part of that because it's like man just because you believe it and think it's so i don't want you to look at me and think i believe what you believe yeah my girl was confusing me with some old colin kaepernick nation of islam shit and people was like on different sides, trying to box it's people too in much. different boxes and stuff. It's too much. And I was just like, but even if he was, it don't matter because that's not his box. Like the box that we put him in is a totally different box than that box. Mm-hmm. And it's not 
Shout out to Roddy one Rich. of them are bad. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, but, I mean, um, but uh, did you see what uh did you see what Chelsea Handler did? Nope. So Chelsea Handler posted a video of uh the minister. Mm-hmm. You know, talking about um you know, saying positive things, saying a peaceful thing. I can't remember exactly he what, what says he says peaceful shit. But peaceful things. But you know <laughs> how how the minister is viewed by American television. Man, I went so So let me finish. I, let me finish. Let me finish. All right. So so Chelsea Handler posted this and uh-huh. said, Man, you must retweet this. And the minister was saying good stuff like the minister does. Uh-huh. So Jennifer Aniston retweeted it. A bunch of other white celebrities retweeted it, right? Not knowing nothing about the minister. The next day, uh, who was it? It was like Fox News or MSN or something comes out. Uh, celebrities reposting anti-Semite. Uh, uh, do your research before you post. Like, come on, man. You 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 shitting on the message uh, to spite the messenger. Shitting on the messenger to spite the message, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I said it wrong. What about... um? And all the celebrities, about, all the celebrities took it down. But what about all the celebrities? Except for Chelsea Handler. What about all these celebrities who, whatchamacallit, who, um, who get caught up saying nigga this, nigga that, and when they were 13 years old, they was posting this in this chat room and they get popped with that. Talking about Justin Bieber? No, I'm talking One about lonely uh, nigger. Doja Cat. Oh, I'm yeah. talking about um, yeah. uh, Skilla, Skilla, some, some. Sk- Skrillex? No, some white dude from England. He's a big something. He's not Skepta. Some white dude. I don't know. Uh, you know, Skrill or something. And <laughs> Skrill. He, um, <laughs> but like they, you know, they they write these two page apologies, and then it's all yeah. it's all back to okay, I can sell my music again. You know, like if the minister was anti-Semitic decades ago, I can't find this shit on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Because like for a second, I was like. What's wrong with Louis Farrakhan? Like, let me let me go and do my research. Let me go find something offensive that he might have said about somebody, you know. And then I listen, and all all I could think of to myself was, man, this guy does not stutter. This guy does not slur does his not words, falter, or he no. like he speaks fluently and eloquently mm-hmm. and. It's the best speech I've ever heard, and it's the most positive stuff about loving everybody and getting your shit together. Oh, look, bef- uh, I'm gonna let yeah. you can continue, but let me say, um, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is giving his last public speech speaking engagement. Uh, let me see. I I put the okay. It is on the fourth. That'll be the last time the minister addresses the public. So. Wow. It's gonna be a live streamed event. You could um you can watch live at NOI.org. Make sure if you've never seen the minister speak before, make sure y'all watch on the live stream on July 4th. Uh I'll just say that for me, above all things, above the anti Semitic stuff that people put in the news about him or whatever. But have you ever heard him? Preach any of that? I've I've heard things that you could interpret as anti Semitic, but that you can interpret as Yeah, like he, he would be the minister states facts of history. All right. Right? So when you speak the facts of history, if it's not complimentary to certain groups, it is it's hate anti- speech towards that group. Stupid. Right? But above all things, the minister for me has displayed uh abundant, never ending, overflowing love for his people, man. And I yeah. always love and respect the minister for that. And I will yeah. be watching live on July 4th. All right. So I want to get into something, but I have to go through something else to get there. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's do it. We, we got we got some time. So so the thing I want to get into. Oh, let me just let me just cap what I was saying about my feelings about the. Uh, so pretty much what I mean when I say I have to take time and figure out how I feel. I say that because when we did a show a month ago. Where no 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 what was it three weeks ago, where the looting was taking place as we were recording, mm-hmm. I had a totally different feeling in my heart and mind than I do now, and if we'd have did the show the next week, mm-hmm. I'd have been saying something totally different than what I'm saying now. Yeah, and I can't take that back because it's in the world now. Well, that's crazy because that's exactly what we're saying about Louis Farrakhan mm-hmm. about the minister. Yeah, is. Uh, you say something about Doja Cat, yeah. about 
I don't know. Doja Cat was different because she wasn't really hating black people. She was just hating herself. That's, yeah. that's a totally different animal. Let's. Uh, what about like Louis C.K. Yeah. or Adam Twenty Two? Yeah, Adam Twenty Two was he was saying some crazy stuff. Yeah, you know but I, I, but I've, I've also read headlines mm-hmm. about Adam Twenty Two interviewing somebody else still after the whole thing. I was. like Adam Twenty Two. Mm-hmm. I don't have a problem with him. I watch yeah. his platform. See, I enjoy his content. Because you, like I, have been in those circles, and we've gone to those parties and had those conversations with those guys in yeah. those circles. It's true. And it's like, all right, yeah, peop- everybody says outlandish shit sometimes. The only people that really don't say nothing outlandish in public are the ones that say it in private. Mm-hmm. You know, like either you're going to say it around everybody and not give a fuck about it and not really mean it, yeah. Or you're going to say it in private and mean it wholeheartedly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you're trying to get into it. You know? and, and, but, um, and I respect it totally. And it's your right as an American. But um, I guess my thing about... So the thing that I'm trying to get into mm-hmm. is the plight of the black woman. Let's go. Right? Let's go. But in order to get there... Oh, I know where you're going. Okay. I have to go through... J. Cole? Yeah. Let's do it. I, I'm... I've All been right. waiting for this. Let's do it. All right. So I listened to J. Cole's song, right? And, uh, well, well, let me start at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I opened up Twitter, <laughs> and everybody's <laughs> That's like, how it start. That, <laughs> that's how it always start. Everybody's like, fuck J. Cole. J. Cole's canceled. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. <sighs> Nobody's canceled, happened? people. Nobody's canceled. You know, and I hear all these women, oh, but if it was a male counterpart instead of a female counterpart, he wouldn't care about her tone. They didn't hear 1985. <laughs> they didn't hear Middle Child. <laughs> they just don't know. Man, they, you know what I'm saying? And it's just the name like, of the song, by the way, is J. Cole, Snow on the Bluff, if you hadn't heard it yet. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, let me go hear this song. I got to listen to this shit. I was expecting some brutality. Yeah, right? I'm yeah. thinking, oh, fuck these bitches in the club. We going to toss some pussy up. <laughs> you know? I, I, that's what I'm thinking. Like, nah, did J. Cole just sell out? What's going on? Is Lil Baby going crazy and J. Cole selling out? Like, what's going on? You know? That would be weird. <laughs> I, yeah. And then I hear it, and this J. Cole doing J. Cole. Like, J. Cole raps to himself. He doesn't he, rap for you. He wasn't out of his J. Cole character. No, nah, J. Cole was rap. He was talking to himself in the journal entry that we just got. We were just so lucky to hear, you know. And then um, I feel like I feel like No Name's response is song thirty three, right? I haven't listened to it yet. Why not? How are you sitting here talking to me and you ain't heard it yet? Because I just saw it. I just saw the headline uh, that she made a response. It was last night, and I like didn't listen to it. Two, three days ago, she made it. Yeah, I, and, ju- I um, just saw it. And I feel like her response was more for the fans than mm-hmm. for J. Cole. Like, because I guess, I guess J. Cole's whole thing was like, man, this seems like a person that's way smarter than me who's been out here reading books and talking and, and getting it in. Like, cause I mean, I've seen J Cole at the we protest. Got ox? We got an ox. No yeah. Ox. Yeah. 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 Okay. Turn the ox up a little bit, but I've seen J Cole at the protest and stuff. And he, um, he was like, uh, you know, out there walking and marching with the people, but at the same time, no name, no stuff. And she's, um, she's, no. Is, is this one? Is this one? There we go. But um, yeah, she knows stuff, and he's nah, like, "You turned yourself up. You turned nah, us up." I didn't. Oh, I did. Didn't yeah. I? The ox should be next to it. Now you turned us all the way down. No, I didn't. That's where we was. Oh man. There we were. That's it. That's, that's it. We. No, nah, that's us. No, nah, you just turned us. Uh, all right, look, we're not finna use no oxygen. All right, I'm gonna just use the phone because <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to play the song to give reference while you were speaking. Ah. Oh. See, nah, I don't want to keep talking like the song is you gotta you gotta know this. I guess they know what we're talking about. Man, I really feel like we just wasted a good minute and a half trying to get that. But look, y'all, this is my thoughts on it. Okay. All right. He said what he said, she said what she said, and now the conversation back to Twitter, back to where it all started for me. The conversation on Twitter is the plight of the black woman, the black woman's struggle. 
the black woman's liberation struggle. One, it's a woman's liberation struggle, and as in all women's liberation struggles, the number one thing is to get rid of misogyny, you know, which is oh, like, man. which is... I, I was I was saying this earlier. I, I I said it earlier. It was um to get when, rid of misogyny. Yeah, when somebody else joins your struggle in your your activism to yeah. help you out, they're mm-hmm. gonna wipe out the misogyny in your race, <laughs> and it's still gonna be going on in theirs. I don't I don't you know like that level of virtuism, man. You know, and um, but I guess okay. This is what I was saying. When it comes, this is this is what I wanted to get to. I wanted to get through Jake Holden No Name to get to right here. Okay. When it comes to All Lives Matter versus Black Lives Matter, oh, yeah, shit. there needs to be black people at the forefront of it and allies and everybody, like the different groups can come together, right? But for... The struggle of the black woman in America, the one that right now all I hear is nobody stands up for black women. Nobody cares about black women. Nobody listens to black women's struggle in America, right? What I want to say is for the Afric- for the black woman's struggle in America, we need a black woman's face in the forefront, like, Nobody else's face matters. Like we need her standing up and telling us exactly what she wants, and we need the black man and the allies in the background. We need everybody doing the footwork for none of the credit. That's the only way we're gonna make this happen. You know, and it's it's a tall order. It's a tall glass of water, but it's possible. You know, to get us. To get us to the next level, because it's like it's like Black Lives Matter. We're talking to them, you know what I'm saying? But black women are saying nobody's listening to me, you know. And usually, when somebody's saying no one's listening to me, and you hear it in the back of your mind, bro, you know this is quite a sight different from the stance that you usually take about subgroups. But this subgroup matters, though, you know. Like, More than other subgroups. Yeah. You know, like, if it's, if you're talking about, like, your sexuality or your affinity for one car brand over another or your your style and clothing or something like that, as, that's different. Yeah. You know, but yeah. this is a marginalized race of human beings. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. This is... They didn't no they didn't make any choice to get to exactly where they're at. You know, like and I know what you I know why you're looking at me like that. I mean I, you know I don't know if you do. But but this is like, like this is it's a it's a solid group of people who have had hundreds of years of documented discrimination. Well what I what I will yeah. say about what you just said and I understand, and I feel like uh, oppressed groups in general, because we can talk about the black American experience. We can talk to, about the black woman experience. You could talk about the black uh, illegal immigrant experience. You could talk about the black gay experience. You could talk about the black intellectual experience. You could talk about the black educated experience. You could talk about the black ignorant experience. These are all subgroups of black experience, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to the black experience. And when we start making subgroups and subdivisions inside of the black experience, it becomes the same tribalism that we deal with now outside of the black experience. Like you're creating tribalism inside of a tribalist conflict. Mm-hmm. So how could we ever reach any kind of resolution or goal? Because your struggle is only relevant to you. Like we talk yeah. about how bad black people got it in America. What about um, uh, Sunni Muslims in Afghanistan? Like yeah. it's 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 like this. It's relative. Yeah, it's relative. So it I is. think the way that it has to work is 
Like, man, we have to chalk up everything under this tag of the black experience. And if it's not black, it does not count because at the Mm -hmm. end of the day, the agenda that the so-called agenda that we pushing for is a black one. Yeah. And I and I see and I feel like I feel like black women are the first to be like, shut up. This ain't your problem. Don't we didn't ask for your opinion. You know what I'm saying? And that turns off helpers from helping us to the point where people just stop listening to them and it's like but they still have something to say and there's still a part of the black struggle mm-hmm. you know so just, just be- because they're women and they're angry because you're talking over them doesn't make what they're saying any less important i see it you know no nah, and i guess i guess i'm sounding like chance in the no name versus J. Cole thing. And I thought he was out of line. And me I can't lie. I feel like J. Cole didn't come at her Not at in all. a negative way at all. Not at all. Like everything he said was of a respectful you know what I'm saying? Like in a respectful <laughs> willing to learn, asking to be educated tone. Look, and we don't we don't have to go too deep on this, but I would say man, just if you're listening out there, do some research as to what was done to the black family and the mentality of the black woman in America. Uh, namely the housing project, namely welfare, um, and things like that, where the black woman was told basically you must discard your oh, man, champion, yeah. you must discard your protector, you must discard your husband, father, leader, right? If you would like your slice of Americana. And I think by that regard, there is a level of dysfunction that must first be addressed within black people before we present anything to the world. Like Malcolm X said it best. He was like, man, white people cannot join us, but they can help us. Because if we are to have black white unity, we must first have black black unity. Yeah, you said that last week. I or, think the or no, I guess we was kicking the last week. Yeah, we, said, we that. said that. I think the main goal for us, as far as everything goes, and Lil Baby said it on record, and I'm so proud of Lil Baby because he he kept it real. Like he didn't subscribe to the tribalist mentality. Mm-hmm. Like, man, you can say what you want about them out there, but we gotta fix our problems in here first. Yeah. They can give all the humanitarian aid that they want to. If we mm-hmm. still in conflict with each other. It'll never be the way we want it to be. Yeah, but you know what? I, I kind of feel like, and this might be giving them too much after this. It might be time to get back to the students. It might be. But um, I feel like the human race was designed to do this just over and over. Oh, again. yeah. Yeah. You know? No doubt about that. Like, it's not like a, this isn't something that we can fix. We need to get past that. <laughs> and, and, and let's argue about the up. next thing. Yeah. <laughs> fuck it up. Yeah. Like, we're going to get past this, argue about something else, get past that, argue about... I mean... Because once the, you're done fucking everything else up, mm-hmm. what is it time to do? Get back to the students? It's time to get fucked up. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> you you constantly fucking something up. Like, the the like the, 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 con, the, the, the total uh, goal of man is conquest in all things. To fuck it up. Yeah. And not man like men, but man is in all... Mankind. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. After you've taken over that. the world, now it's time to let the liquor take over you. Yeah, something has to be getting taken over. Yeah, you know, a quest. Right. I will say that, man. Uh, I'm, I'm. While I can't say I agree or disagree with everything going on, I can say that I'm proud of people exercising their rights as Americans. There's too much shit going on to agree yeah. with everything that's going on. Yeah, yeah. Like I or mean, disagree with everything that's going on. I, I I express sincere love for my countrymen. Yeah. Because if this is what you're doing, you're doing what has been done in this country for generations yeah. upon generations. I guess you know what, man. I I guess you and me, mm-hmm. we need to get these passports stamped. You got your passport, right? No, I have to have it by October though. All right, yeah, so we got to get our ID. passports. Our real ID no, coming in October. October 2021 21, yeah, 2021. Yeah. Make sure y'all get y'all passports so you won't have to get the real ID. Yeah. 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 But um, 
yeah, we got to get our passports. And because because I feel like a theme that's been running this whole show mm-hmm. since episode one is how else would we live if we don't live in America? Right. Like you know, we don't like, know anything but this capitalist. Because like you got guys like like a Wiz Khalifa or a Lil Wayne and they're like, yeah, I go get that bag in Dubai, but I'm only staying in Dubai for four hours. And then I'm gone. <laughs> I'm finna go somewhere where I can smoke and drink, you know, eat some fried chill. chicken. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Chill. Like, yeah. like so, so it's not about not going other places. Like the biggest pothead, Wiz Khalifa, I'll go check a bag in Dubai, and then just go straight from the show to the airport and bam. Like he's not disrespecting their rules. He's mm-hmm. there to get the bag, you know what I'm saying? But then he's gone to another country. Where he can do stuff, you know, and I guess with that level of travel comes a level of another, uh, the next another level, another level of, level of understanding. Yeah, yeah, like oh man, I can do this, I can do that, I can um, when I go to this country, it's not as bad as going to that country. You know what I'm saying? Like when I go to Canada, yeah, I can do this and I can do that, but when I go to Mexico, I can do this and I can do that, and that I can't do in Canada, that I can't do in Pittsburgh, you know. That I can't do in Estonia. That's the human experience. Yeah, you know. So, if we're closing, I'd like to close by uh, saying one thing, and then I'm going to say another thing. Oh. Um. First of all, let's uh, try to. I would like to see somebody create a forum where we can get some understanding. I would like to see Tone Talks and Candace Owens talk to each other. Tone I, Talks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who that is. I'll show you Tone Talks when we get off uh when we get off of the program. But yeah, I would like to see Tone Talks and Candace Owens talk to each other. Um people have been very hard on Candace Owens and I understand why. Mm-hmm. But I have a feeling that we might hear that Joe Biden's running mate is Candace Owens. And yeah, if that yeah. happens, would you still vote for Joe Biden? <laughs> he did say he was gonna choose a woman. And a black woman. Oh, he said a black woman. I think it's been confirmed by the DNC, not Joe Biden. Ah, uh, but um, yeah, I would love to see Candace Owens and Tone talks. Uh, just her and a representative of Ados talk. Um, and I would like to see the reaction of the black experience to that because man, they lay into her heart, and I understand why, but I don't. Not in the way that other people do, because yeah. I look at her and I see a black woman. That's rationalizing things as she does just like any other human i don't have mm-hmm. to agree but i'm not gonna quarrel with a black woman in public there you go i'm there not gonna go. that's it yeah. say it again say it again man i'm not gonna beat up my baby mama in public <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean that that's not what i meant i was joking look, look, i was look, joking look. i was joking and that's the misogyny i was like, joking like, i know he's joking I'm laughing at his joke because I have experience personally with this man, and I know he ain't got no baby mama. No, no. <laughs> oh my God! Come on, help me out, man. <laughs> but I know <laughs> that he's not gonna beat on his woman in private. Yeah, you know, I, I'm so not gonna know. have quarrels with my black brothers or sisters in the public eye. You know, but um, like. Is is that certain level of comfort that we have yeah. joking around about shit, yeah. like that women don't feel comfortable with us having, you know? But I've been mm-hmm. in a room full of women, and oh, my man, woman, they, they vicious. My woman might be like, oh, "Hey, don't come in here. You gonna get your dick cut off?" Yeah, you know, man. Like, whoa. <laughs> hey, that like, that that woman cipher is dangerous. Yeah, man. Yeah. I I don't need. You know, like, <laughs> I don't need y'all to stop that, but I know that when I walk out this room, it ain't going to happen to me, yeah. you know. But, you know, I just wanted to get that off, man. Uh, so, I mean, I guess, yeah, we are running over, so we got to get out of here. Make sure you um follow us man, on. It's hot than a motherfucking yeah. here, man. Make sure you, um if you're watching on YouTube.com slash Faculty Lounge, make sure you check us out on SoundCloud.com slash Faculty Dash Lounge. And on Spotify, you can search Faculty Lounge. We'll pop right up. Uh, make sure if you're watching on SoundCloud or Spotify, check us out on YouTube.com slash Faculty Lounge. On all social media, we are at the Faculty Lounge. That's D-A Faculty Lounge. I am at Chicago Fog. That's Chicago F-O-G.
Yeah. Uh, anonymous everywhere. It's just anonymous. E N O N O M O S. Yeehaw! <laughs> yeah, so Breezy's not here, but you can find her at, at underscore somebody Breezy on all social media and the uh, clothing line that's WLC Clothing. She's got some great, some great black merch going on, some nice Juneteenth merch. Um, check her out, show some love, spend a couple of dollars, man. Yep. Uh, appreciate you guys for stopping by. Uh, we'll be back next week at Q4 with the good audio and the good video. Uh, just good audio, good video. Just for you guys, man. And good wings, good shrimp. <laughs> it's hot as hell. Good mild sauce in this mouth. Shut up. <laughs> good whiskey. It's hot as hell in this studio, man, so we're going to get out of here. So. Good fan. Thank you guys for watching, and what time is it? Time to get back to the studio. Double salute. Thanks for watching and listening. Peace.